We're going to be building a style sheet switcher in using jQuery and CSS. So let me just show you what this is in case you're not familiar with it. This is our page right here and I have some links on the page and when I click them you can see that the look of the page changes significantly. The background color is obviously changing but you might also notice that the text color as well as the link colors change and I have a different look here called fire and again text color, link color, background color all changes and if I click just change your look it takes me back to what it looked like by default. So those are the things that we're changing and you could change all sorts of things. The reason that you might want to offer your user more than one CSS file so that they can customize the look of your website is because you might want to offer like a kind of a stylish low contrast version of your website and something that had more high contrast and was easier to read depending on the demographics of the user. You may have people that are kind of low vision readers or perhaps younger readers or older readers where they might benefit from having some larger typefaces show on your website or perhaps you just want to offer your users you know a different style. You, you know maybe you like black as your favorite color for the background maybe you like text that appears on a lighter colored background so offer them a couple different choices it, whatever the reason it's pretty easy to be able to swap between multiple style sheets using jQuery. So the first step that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add in the code that we're going to need to make this happen. And if we look in our page here, I have some of the code it has already been generated just because I'm using an image map in this particular example and I didn't want to have to like code the image map with you by hand so I just left that in there so I'm just gonna uncomment out my image map and I'm going to add a div that wraps around the image map and I'm going to give this an ID of style switcher and we'll go ahead and close the div after the map and then inside of the style switcher div I'm going to need an image tag and I'll set the source attribute to the image that we're going to be using. And I'm just going to add some default alt tags and width and height attributes. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the use map attribute because I want to make sure that the browser knows that I'm using a image map in this particular instance. Alright, that should do the trick. I'm just going to save my page and we'll go and refresh this in the browser. And the path to my image must not be right because all I see is my alt tag right there. So let's just check this really quick. I just forgot the A in images. When I refresh my page you can see that now my image is showing. I am getting this ugly border so let me just add a border attribute in here as well. That should get rid of that border for us looks much better. Okay, perfect. So this now looks the way we want it to look. The next step is that I'm going to need to create a set of links that is going to allow the user to swap between the CSS files. So you can make this as involved or as simple as you like. I'm going to make my example fairly simple. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie into the area tags that I already have right here and I will just add a rel attribute and the rel attribute is going to indicate which CSS file the link is going to load. So we're just going to put rel and we're going to put the path to the link that we want to call. Alright, and I'm just going to copy paste this here. So this is the style sheet that is going to actually the one for ice. This is the alt tag for ice. This is the style sheet for ice right here. And my fire style sheet uses 804 styles 3. And then this is just my regular one right here, which just uses 804 styles 1. So my rel attributes are linking there. And again, those are just indicating which CSS file the link is going to load. You could have passed this information on in the href attribute. The reason I decided to use the rel attribute in, instead is just in case the user has JavaScript disabled, then the CSS file that's listed in the rel isn't going to actually send the user off to that link. If I put the link in the href 
when they clicked it, it would actually link to that CSS file, and that's not what I want to have happen. So this way, if JavaScript is disabled, then when they click this link, nothing is going to happen. What actually might be a better solution is to have the href links all go to a page that just says that page uses JavaScript, please enable JavaScript to be able to fully experience the web page or something like that, but we'll just leave it as it is for our example here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my CSS file and this has all the styles that style the page currently so if we look in the browser I just want to you to note the background cover color is obviously white the text color and the link color we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna override those attributes by just putting some styles at the very end of our style sheet and I'm just gonna tie into the body tag. The body is already defined earlier in my style sheet but I'm gonna go ahead and put it down at the very bottom which will because of the cascade it will overwrite this. So you can see up here I have a body that defines the font family and the color, the default text color right here. Well I'm gonna go ahead and in my style sheet I'm just setting the background color to white and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the color of my text to be a little bit different just so we can see a change in this. And we'll go ahead and we'll style our links as well. Okay, so if we save our page and we come back into the browser and we refresh, notice that the text and the links will change as soon as I click refresh. So there you go, the text is a little bit lighter and this link color is more kind of this uh, yellowy green that we're using in the rest of the site. So that is successful. It is working the way we anticipate it to. I've already styled the other two style sheets. Let me just open them really quickly. They are exactly the same except at the very bottom I have a style that will make the ice style which sets the background color to be a different color. It actually is pulling in a background image that repeats. It's just a gradated strip that will recreate, repeat across the page. It sets the text color to a new text color and the link color to a new link color. And I have similar styles on the fire version of the CSS page as well. So again, it's just setting these various properties. Okay, so now we're ready to create our jQuery. I'm gonna go into the JavaScript file and I just have the document ready function and we've used this many times before so I'm going to go ahead and hook in to my selector using my CSS selector of style switcher and I'm going to specify area so this is just going to say any area tag that is within style switcher and we are going to pass on our dot click event which is going to run a function and inside the function I'm going to go ahead and I'll just type this and then I'll explain what it means. Okay, so this little line of code what it is doing is it is essentially saying when someone clicks on this link replace the link style sheet tags a ref attribute with the contents of the links rel attribute and we should probably pass on a return false so that if the user does click the browser will be prevented from actually following the link which makes sense to do that so once again we're just using the jQuery selector we're selecting any link we're looking for an attribute on href and then we're going to pass on the this, whatever is clicked, its rel attribute. And if we go ahead and save this page and preview it in the browser, you can now see when you click the links, the style of the page does change. So if I click ice, we get the blue style, text is changed to blue, link color is a blue. If we click fire, we get the new background color, text is red, link color is kind of an orange color, and if we click change this look, it goes back to the default settings that we specified. So pretty cool, we're actually switching out the style sheets based on linking, and you can see that that really only took us essentially three lines of jQuery. So this is working, it's functioning completely, but 
it would be nice to, in addition, give it some memory. And we'll use the cookies that we used in the last exercise to do that. So this will be nice because if the users go to your website and they switch the styles to their specific preference, then it would be nice that every single time they visit your site, it's going to come up with those default preferences. And you probably have used websites, you might even not notice because it really provides a seamless experience for the viewer but where you go and you can customize certain settings and then the next time you go back you know it remember those those settings for you so it's gonna make it a lot easier for them to be able to go through the site so we're gonna use that jQuery plugin and I already have the link in my HTML linking to the jQuery cookie plugin file and we'll go back to our JavaScript right here and what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a, a few statements here. The first thing that we're going to add is we're going to add a conditional statement. So I'm going to type if right here and I'll use that jQuery selector for the cookie plugin. Alright, so what's happening here is this is going to check to see as soon as the page is done loading to see if a cookie called CSS, we're just going to call our cookie CSS, has been set. And if so, it's going to set the style sheet to be the one that's indicated in that cookie. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. So we're just saying that if there's a cookie called CSS, check and see if that's there. And if the cookie is there, then set the style sheet to whatever is indicated inside of the cookie. Let's go down to our style sheet switcher. We also have to include here attaching the cookie. So in case they do switch the style again or the first time they switch the style. So I'll go ahead and use the cookie selector and we'll just set it to expire in like 365 days a year or something like that. Okay so what we have here is in our side of our click function after we set the style sheet we're gonna set a cookie and this cookie isn't gonna expire for an entire year and it's just telling the cookie to pull the information for the style sheet from the rel attribute of whatever was clicked. Alright let's go ahead and save this and preview it in the browser. So if I come back to the browser and I refresh the page, the page looks the same. When I click my various links to switch the styles they all work and if I do switch the style now I'm going to refresh the page and when I click refresh I just clicked it you can see that the page now stays it remembers that I was showing the fire type of look so if you look down here you'll see that the page reloads there it got reloaded it stays if I switch it to ice and I refresh the page now it's going to stay and remember that and that's because of the cookie. Now in certain cases, and it's probably really hard to show you this because this is showing locally, you might have actually noticed it before before I set the cookie. If I f refresh the page, I don't know if I can get it to do this, it's, it seems like just the very first time, but you might notice it that there could be a little flash of the default CSS when the page first loads and that's because the script is essentially waiting until the document is ready before switching the links her ref. So one way around this is that if we go back into our statement right here and if we just pull out this if statement and if we just put this above the document ready function this will run the script first and then it will function the rest. So then you won't see that flash of how the, the page initially looks with whatever the default background information is. And this might be not be something that bothers you. Generally speaking, you, it's not a good idea to run the jQuery until the document is fully ready. But as long as the jQuery comes after the link tag in our document structure, so here it's coming after the link tag. Here's the link tag up here. It shouldn't be a major concern in this particular case. We could run this. Just be cautious when you do pull things out of the document ready. This just means that the jQuery is going to run before the document is done loading. So our link tags href is going to be swapped before the CSS has actually been applied. 
like I said, it's generally a bad idea to manipulate the DOM before the document is actually ready, but because we know the exact tag that we want to manipulate, we can actually safely take our jQuery and place it outside of the document being ready. So this is an instance where that would work, and if we save the page, Locally, as I said, you're not going to really notice anything, but if you uploaded this to a server, you might notice that the very first time the page loads, if you had refreshed the page, it might show a flash of white, and then it would show the new color that they want. This is a great example, though, of, again, using the cookie function in jQuery, and it's kind of cool to be able to customize the look of the page and have the switcher, the style sheet switcher function as such.